Ladies, gents, and fellow readers, we have made it to our last installment of the Iliad podcast, where I hope you bridge the gaps in plot and character development between our assigned readings. The Iliad is a large text that I wish we could read in full, but because we, at a point, must leave Greece and move on to the rest of European development, we get to experience the high points. It is kismet, though, that the end of our podcast focuses on a funeral, one for the great Greek warrior Patroclus in Book 23. Book 23 begins with Achilles still grieving deeply for his fallen companion, Patroclus. Achilles cannot find peace after Hector's death and continues to mourn Patroclus. He refuses to bury Patroclus immediately, believing that his friend's spirit cannot rest until Hector's body has been desecrated. At night, Patroclus' ghost appears to Achilles in a dream, pleading with him to conduct the funeral rite so that his soul can enter the underworld. The ghost also requests that their bones be placed together in a shared urn as a symbol of their close bond. Achilles, moved by this vision, promises to honor Patroclus' wishes. The next day, Achilles organizes the funeral rites for Patroclus. He orders the Greek soldiers to gather wood for the funeral pyre. Achilles also makes a solemn promise to sacrifice the 12 Trojan captives on Patroclus's pyre as a part of the ritual, further emphasizing his unrelenting desire for vengeance. Once the wood is gathered, Patroclus's body is placed on the pyre. Achilles cuts a lock of his own hair as an offering to his friend, a gesture of mourning and loyalty. He originally intended to offer this hair to the river god, Spurtius, I think is how you say that. Uh, it's kind of a, a lesser uh, river god, um, but his sorrow in it, he dedicates it to Patroclus instead. Uh, Achilles sacrifices numerous animals, including sheep, cattle, and horses on the pyre as offerings to Patroclus. He also fulfills his earlier promise by killing 12 Trojan captives, ritually slitting their throats. Should have given you a trigger warning on that, but we know Achilles, even still, after successfully winning the, the battle against Hector, uh, is still enraged. Their bodies are placed on the pyre alongside Patroclus, marking the depth of Achilles' grief and anger once again. He then sets the, pyre, fire, bleh, sets the pyre ablaze and watches as the flames consume Patroclus. However, the fire initially struggles to catch, causing Achilles to call upon winds, uh, to fan the flames. The winds obey, speeding up the burning process so that Patroclus' spirit can move on to the afterlife. After the pyre burns down, the Greeks gather the remains of Patroclus's bones, which are carefully stored in a golden urn as per his request. These bones are temporarily buried in a grave until Achilles joins him in death. Achilles also instructs that a large mound be built over their brutal sot, burial site to serve as a permanent memorial. Following the burial rites, Achilles organizes a series of funeral games in honor of Patroclus. This is natural in the ancient world. These games are significant traditions in Greek culture designed to commemorate the deceased with athletic competitions that showcase physical prowess and also honor the gods. The games are marked by competition and moments of contention, but they also reinforce the camaraderie among the Greek warriors as they honor their fallen comrade. The first and most important event is the chariot race, which draws participation from prominent warriors, include, including Diomedes, um, Menelaus, uh, and many others. The race is fast-paced and fiercely contested with each warrior showing off their skills as charioteers. Diomedes, aided by the goddess Athena, emerges as the victor. However, the race is not without controversy. There, there are some um, contentions to that, uh, to that victory. Um, and, um, 
Melanus ends up protesting, uh, recognizing the mistake of everything, offers a gesture of reconciliation, and admitted his fall and calmed the tension between them. So as you can imagine, Pa, um, and there's glory to be get to be given to the person who wins this chariot race. And so they fought amongst each other a little bit, um, but in the end, no harm done. Following the chariot race, other contests take place like boxing, wrestling, uh, a foot race, armed combat, and archery. So um, there's a number of, you know, heated competitions uh, that go on with each one of those uh, and I will spare you all of the extraneous details um, but that that was par for the course also in uh, the funeral games is to have these sorts of competitions like boxing wrestling foot racing armed combat and archery so at the end of the day the Greeks conclude the games with a grand feast in honor of Patroclus this gathering strengthens the bonds between the warriors, reminding them of their shared struggles and the honor they must uphold for their fallen comrades. Although the games offer a temporary distraction, Achilles remains haunted with his grief. Each night unable to sleep, he drags Hector's body around Patroclus' tomb as a continuation of his vengeance. This act of desecration reveals Achilles' inner turmoil and his inability, really, to reconcile with the loss of his friend. If Greek history begins with Homer's epics, then I'd hope that we found some historical value still in them today, especially given the paradigm shifts in historical discourses that makes our stories less and less allegorical over time. The great value of Book 23 is its chronicle of ancient Greek funeral rituals. Achilles' grief for Patroclus drives the narrative, and the funeral rites symbolize both their honor to give the dead and the cathartic release of emotion for the living. A special practice that we can lock in its spot in time as our traditions and grief look very much different today. The competitions in Book 32 showcase the heroic virtues of strength, skill, and courage, and they reinforce the importance of legacy and remembrance. The book also deepens the exploration of Achilles' character, highlighting his profound grief and the emotional toll that the war has taken on him. The funeral games, while celebratory in nature, are underscored by the pervasive sense of loss and the inevitability of more death to come. So as always, thanks for listening. The reason why Achilles is the hero of the epic will be revealed to you in your reading assignment for book 24. The tragic flaw must be resolved for the story to end because it is the epic, excuse me, it is the epic poem's driver uh, in the tragic flaw, the entire text begins with Achilles' rage, and so it must end when that rage is no longer there. So ponder this. What is the cure for Achilles' anger? Who will deliver it to his tent? The most emotional book, in my opinion, is yet to come. And know that I've enjoyed delivering this podcast to get you here. Enjoy your last reading assignment for the Iliad. See you later.